Hi everyone, welcome to Apache Conference Asia 2022. Before I go into the talk, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Mukund. I work as a software engineer at Cloudera. I'm also an Apache Hadoop committer. Most of my work in Apache Hadoop is related to cloud storage connectors like S3 and Azure ABFS. So today I'm gonna talk about fine-grained authorization to cloud storage using Apache Ranger. So what the agenda would be? So first I'll talk about what Apache Ranger is, and then before and after Apache Ranger, and then authorization in cloud storage before and in before and after introduction of RAS. Then I'll try to explain some use cases which we solved via RAS. And then at the end, would like to give a bit details about implementation. Okay, let's move forward. So what is Apache Ranger? I'm sure that most of the Apache Hadoop com uh, community are aware of, uh, aware of this. So Apache Ranger is uh, widely used as an authorization service for most of the product portfolio from Apache Hadoop ecosystem, like HDFS, IE, Wedgebase, et cetera. And everybody in, who uses Apache Hadoop are well-versed in configuring Ranger policies for providing access to users and groups in products like this. So uh, just to give an overview, like what Ranger brought to the Hadoop ecosystem, I would like to explain like how, how things were before Ranger. So before Ranger, every cluster administrator uh, and security administrator had to go and define access control list policies in different, different services separately. It's like if somebody wants to uh, access some HDFS location, some user or some group, they have to define the policies there. And similarly for Hive separately, for HBase separately. And then they, and each service has their own logic to, uh, to work with these policies and uh, to work with this, uh, to run these policies and uh, give access to the end users and they have their own uh, way of writing writing audit logs. So it was kind of uh, really difficult for the cluster administrators to go and uh, define policies in different, different services for same set of users. There was like no consolidated console where the cluster administrator can go and just add few policies for a few users and groups. So with Ranger, what happened is we have a centralized security policy management and auditing. So now the cluster administrators and can go to a very specific, uh, very specific console called Ranger Admin Policy Console. And he can define policies for each of the components, whether it be HDFS, Hive, or HBase. And Ranger will just store these policies at one specific location in their own database. And how other systems will work is like HDFS, Hive, and HBase. They will just implement a plugin before giving access to the end user. And then the plugin will just run and act, check, run the Ranger policies, check if the user has access and return true false for, to the end service HDFS Hive. And the Ranger while checking the policies will audit all the access, all the access at one centralized location. So now with Ranger, what happened is like, we have a very centralized space for the whole authorization to work. And even the audit is present at just one centralized place. So this was like a very good, this was very good for the, uh, for the cluster administrators and they were super happy with this. 
and they got even used to it a lot. But now what happened is now we are in a world of cloud storage, uh, but Ranger always worked with HDFS. But everybody now is moving towards cloud storage, whether it be S3 or Azure or GCS. And Re Ranger was never supposed to work with this cloud storage. And all the cluster administrators are like super used to Ranger and on-premise systems. So that's how the gaps in the current system started occurring. So let's talk about what the gaps are. So for HDFS users, users could create fine-grained Unix style policies in Ranger to give permissions for every file or directories. And uh, it also enabled per user home slash name directories. Like you could just create one policy which will just enable for every user you have a specific home directory or temp directory. But for cloud storage, it has their own set of uh, authorization system, mostly called as IAM rules, so wherein you go and create IAM roles and groups. And mostly the bucket is owned by cloud account. And then the cloud account administrator has to go and create multiple roles and groups and give them access to different prefixes for in the cloud store. And there was no actual audits like we used to have for the HDFS in Ranger. And with, with the growing users in, in the system, creating a lot of IAM roles was like super painful for the for all the big big customers okay so this was like so the so the security administrator security admins they 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 were like not happy with this thing so we thought of solving this problem by introducing ras with cloud storage so after 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 introduction of RAS, uh, let's see how what how how it matches with the HDFS and cloud storage the authorization. Now both has the same it has like the same fine grained Ranger style authorization, and uh, now you can create Ranger policies even for the cloud storage paths. So uh, files and directories, you can enable create Ranger policies to enable per user home directories, and even the all the for all uh, cloud storage, whether it be SDFS or Hype, you you will have audits for each and every calls, and there you nobody has to worry about creating lot of IAM roles and policies and groups and things like that. Now every all the cluster administrators does not need to learn new things. They they are they were used to Ranger. Now they they can just continue using Ranger as it is. So so it was like a good start, and they they were happy with this. Okay. So what is RAS? which I keep mentioning again and again. So RAS is a uh, service, separate service on top of Ranger, which provides REST APIs for the remote clients to authorize resources using Apache Ranger policies. It also allows Kerberos authenticated and authorized users to access cloud storage like AWS S3 or even Azure. And uh, it also supports delegation tokens. Delegation tokens are very important for long running Hadoop jobs, MapReduce, Spark, Hive for authorization because you cannot keep calling uh, RAS every time, uh, every time the tokens has expired or things like that. So, 
So this was very important. That's why I have mentioned this separately. Now let's talk more about the use cases we have solved by RAS. So first basic use case would be like, suppose like uh, if we compare with HDFS, users would be like listing or reading uh, different files and directories. So suppose if somebody is using Hadoop, Hadoop FS CLI, the FS connector, to list the list a directory, and uh, and what happens with RAS? So if there is no RAS, the IAM policies will be will be there in picture. But now with RAS, if you don't have a specific ranger policies, it will just fail saying access denied. Like it will fail for a HDFS directory. And now once you add the required policy for that particular directory and for that particular user in ranger uh, i'm gonna illustrate that with some diagrams below you the the access the listing of directory succeeds okay so let's see what how the how it looks first now without this is without policy uh we can see that I'm trying, somebody's trying to list this uh, location, M Thakur, EU Central M Thakur. And it says that get file status. And the ranger says the result is denied because, because the there are no policies not determined and the policy ID is minus one. Now uh, let's try to add, let's try to add a policy and uh, see if if the listing succeeds so how we add a policy is uh, we go to ranger policies ranger uh, admin and we have like different different tabs for each services so cms3 is like for the s3 policies we go and give some names and give the bucket and the path so, so the user was trying to list this bucket and this particular path right And then we go which user you want to give access. You can even as, uh, add groups here. And what are the permission? If you just want to give read or if you just want to write or if you want both. So we have given read and write both access to user CSSOM talk board, which was trying to log in and to this bu bucket and this specific prefix path. And once this access is given to this policy, once we have saved this policy, and try to do the listing again. We can see like Hadoop FS minus LS, the same path. We see that it succeeded. And if we can list a lot of, we see the result there uh, that it listed all, all the directories, all the directories under this particular path. Okay. Now, as I said, in in HDFS, when users used to access HDFS, <clears throat> we 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 could like see lot of audit logs properly. But with IAM, it is you can access you can see access logs on the on the uh, cloud storage side. But it will be different for everybody. But our security administrators were like super used to Ranger kind of audit logs. So we integrated the same. And now the even the audit logs are visible properly. We can see here that first, uh, first it was not determined. So it was showing not determined. What was the type of call read and all. And after adding the policy, we saw that, okay, it's allowed and the, it succeeded. So that's how the security audits can be done with the, uh, after enabling Ranger RAS. I, I would like to dig deep more into audit logs. We can see like <clears throat> different, different, we have like a different type of operations as well. Somebody is trying to do rename, somebody is trying to do get file status. So these are the HTML, uh, S3 operation. Somebody is trying to do the user 
user is always me because I was trying <clears throat> different, different operations and the paths you will have and the client IP and things like that. So if you see the drill down of a specific audit log, we have like, okay, for which policy ID it succeeded? What was the policy ID? And then if policy ID is like minus one, then that means that it, it would have failed. We have an audit ID. We have even the time, what application and the user, what service name with this policy, service type S3, it can be S3 ABFS, it can be ABFS. The type, resource type is path for ranger, it can be even database and things like that. Now, what was the permission required? Read and, <clears throat> sorry. Now result and things like that from which host, which IP it is coming and things like that. So with, with the introduction of RAS, we were able to get audit logs as well as uh, restrict access to different user like we used to do in HDFS. Now, now even in cloud store. Let's talk about the second uh, use case. Somebody is trying to run a Spark job. Okay, so when somebody will launch a Spark job, a Spark job will always require some access on a particular file, right? If, if they wants to read or write. So if you don't give the, if you if you don't have the ranger policies, the Spark job will fail saying access denied. And then once once the, for that particular file, the, direct, uh, the access is given, the ranger policy is defined in the ranger console, the Spark job will succeed. So we can see it's, it's quite similar to the previous one. We can see the path, the bucket, the path, the user and read and write. After adding this policy, the job would succeed. Uh, now it's a similar use case called uh, with running high queries. Uh, so there can be like the different types of high queries. It can be a managed table or an external table. I'm giving an example here for external table. So external table always works on a specific path. It's like it will just overwrite the particular location associated with an external table. So suppose somebody is trying to, some user is trying to do create external table, give the table definition, location, and then table data. So this is the path. So it's like similarly, like we did for Spark, like we did for Hadoop FSLS, we have to add a ranger policies to give access to the desired user to desired location. Otherwise, if you don't give access, it will fail right away with access denied exceptions, which is exactly similar to the HDFS world. Okay, apart from this basic use cases like Hadoop CLI or Spark or Hive, it's like the widely used use cases. Even the other, other things are integrated with uh, RAS, like even accessing S3, running queries to S3 through Apache Zeppelin Notebook and uh, accessing cloud storage like <clears throat> S3 through Apache Hue file browser. You can access and even if you don't have access to different different locations, you won't be able to. And once once it is given, you will be able to access properly. And then if some user there is a system which wants to which tries to do a backup to a S3 bucket, then that for that service user you have to define policy in Ranger and give the bucket and use that bucket only. Otherwise, the backup will fail. Okay. So these are some use cases I wanted to cover here. Okay. Uh, let's talk uh, a bit of uh, implementation details. So what, what we did is 
how we solve this for S3 is like we kind of uh, leverage the AWS before signing and uh, we kind of generated the signatures. If, if, if the correct policies are defined in Ranger and then passed it to the uh, clients such that they can use that signature to com communicate to S3. If if a client, if if the client, the user which is calling, if it, if it does not have the right set of policy defined in Ranger, he, the client will directly get access denied exceptions. So no signature, no right signature will be generated and passed to them. Okay. And uh, so, as we are like, as we were generating a lot of signature, so we thought of, uh, and it was kind of creating a bit of overhead in the system. We we also implemented signature caching for if, if somebody is doing consecutive request, reading the same, same file multiple times in a same input stream, then we, rather than checking the policies again and again, we would just, use the same signature and call S3 for Okay. So that was mostly it. Uh, so I would like to thank you guys for listening to this talk and joining this talk. And thanks to everyone involved in this project. This was like a very big uh, company wide project and like lot of people were involved in this so that's why i'm not putting names here because it would feel like so many product managers so many developers so many other engineers and different different people so thank you everyone for joining hope you have a good day uh and yeah feel uh, feel free to email me or message me on public channels if you have any doubt about this talk or if you want to learn more about this, once again, thank you so much. Bye. Have a great day.